everyone, welcome to Integra Coaching. Today we will be discussing power management. My name is Christine Bierman and I'm the marketing coordinator for Integra Coach. My name is PJ Clanton, I'm the motorized technical training manager. So let's talk about how power flows through the coach. Can you explain that process to us? Sure, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, we've got three sources of power to start off with. You've got your shore power, your generator, and then your batteries. So those three sources all work together and kind of power the entire coach. Um, if we're plugged into a campground and, and we're gonna be at that um, pedestal post there, we plug into that and the power is gonna go from that cord into your transfer switch. From the transfer switch, it's gonna go to the driver's side overhead and into the breaker box. So there's two breaker boxes up there. The one on the left is gonna be your main breaker box. The one on the right is a sub panel. We'll get into that sub panel a little bit later. But it does go to that main breaker box and then that power will go down to the basement where we have our inverters in between those frame rails. And from there it comes back up to the sub panel. All of that is then distributed out to the different outlets, recepts that runs your refrigerators, your TVs, uh, stoves, all of those things that you have in your coach. It's gonna power all of those. And also at the same time, that inverter is also connected to the third source of power, which is our batteries. So that inverter charges our batteries at the same time. That keeps those things charged up so we can essentially use all three power sources at the same time. Uh, how that kind of works is your generator is going to be dominant. If you turn your generator on anytime, even if you're plugged in, the generator will power the coach. You can get the cleanest power from your generator. We really don't know what we're getting from a campground. We could get into some campgrounds. You may be the last person in the campground that's maybe there's a row of 13 or 15 coaches there and you could be the last person on there. You're going to get a little bit of fluctuation in that power. So it may be in your best interest, if you're having some issues, it may be best to try your generator and make sure that it is that issue, that we don't have something else going on in the coach. So when you talk about how that power flows through, everything's gonna be kind of one right after another from your shore cord to your transfer switch to the breakers and then out into everything else in your coach. That's how we kind of get that power. Your batteries do the same thing. Those batteries are gonna power all your 12 volt items and also with the inverter, we can power some of those 110 items when we run off the inverted circuit. So that would take care of our dry camping situations as well. Sure. So should customers be changing any settings in their coach when setting up camp? Well, that's all gonna depend. It, it really depends on where you're at, what you're plugged into, and what model in your coach you have. We, we do have some um, slides and things that show what those different years are and the different models and the different components we have in. Um, it's best to take a look at those, but you, you are going to be adjusting some of your settings eventually. Anytime you get into a campground where you have less than 50 amp, you're plugged into 30 amp, or, or you know, let's say you go to Uncle Joe's house and all he has is a 110 outlet in the garage. You're gonna need to redo your settings and kind of adjust so your coach can operate on those particular settings. We can't just go in and plug into a 110 cord and expect it to run all three air conditioners and, and run your refrigerator and turn the stove on. It's gonna end up tri tripping that breaker in the garage. So what we want to do is manage that power and we would have some settings that you could change to manage that power in that situation. What if the customer is dry camping, which means there isn't a power hookup available? What should customers keep in mind then? Well, you have to look at your energy management. Um, when you're dry camping, you do become that management source. Although we have all the programs and we have the different software in the coach through Vega Touch and our Firefly systems, it will manage some of that power. But in a dry camping situation, you are truly depending on your batteries. Those batteries will deplete over time. And when they do, you're gonna run into that situation where you know your lights could get dim, um, things stop operating in the coach. And those are all based on safeties we have set up. There, there are low voltage cutoffs. Sure. So while you are dry camping, you have to maintain and manage your own energy that you're using. So we always tell customers, you know, go easy on the lights. There's no reason you should have all of your lights on at one time when you're dry camping. Um, limit how many times you are opening and closing things, doors have automatic lights on them, um, that type of thing. Also, you know, TVs and things, satellite receivers, they're on all the time, that's drawing power. Anytime you use a microwave, you can rest assured that is absolutely going to take that power down very quickly. So we wanna make sure we maintain that and just manage the energy that we're using. So yeah, we kind of, kind of have to be careful and, and be cautious of what we're using while we're dry camping. So you mentioned shore power early on. Uh, when plugging in for the shore power, is there a special process for it? Uh, what steps do customers need to take in order to plug in properly? Well, again, that, that really depends on where you're at and, and what your campground has available. Uh, if you get into a situation where you're 50 amp, it's, it's simple. 
We go to plug in the coach, we always want to make sure that the pedestal is turned off at the breaker. That's just added safety to the coach. We want to make sure that that power is actually turned off before we ever plug our coach in. So you can turn the post breaker off, plug your coach in, then turn that post breaker back on. The other thing you got to consider is if you do get into the situation where you don't have 50 amp, you've got 30 amp or you have 20 amp, 15 amp, you know, like we said, Uncle Joe's garage, maybe uh, you get into those situations. They do make adapters that you can use. You're just going to plug your cord right into that. And they also make energy management supplies that you can get that will govern how much power is coming in. So you use the right adapter for what you have available and that should take care of all your situations. So batteries can be pretty expensive to replace. Um, is there any battery maintenance customers we should know about? Uh, absolutely, there are. Uh, and this, this again goes back to the years. Over the years, we've changed a few things. We've gone to different batteries. So if you've got an earlier coach, we'll, we'll just say earlier coach, probably 2016 or earlier. Those batteries are located outside, either on the driver or passenger side, right behind the wheel well. Those really require constant maintenance. Those will need to be cleaned off all the time. There, there's, there's a thing called parasitic draw. There's also dirt and road debris that get on your top of your batteries. So being right behind that wheel well, we're also putting that, that dirt and debris up there. So that's where their maintenance comes in. They have to keep that clean. Anytime we get any of that dust and debris on there, it could create a little bit of parasitic draw, which constantly is gonna run those batteries down. Uh, we've used flooded batteries in the past as well, so we know those gas out. You'll get all that, you know, that white, gooey, crummy, kind of crusty yeah. film on top of the battery. We'll want to keep that cleaned off as well. Uh, if you have a 2017 or newer, we did change our batteries. We've actually made that so they are really what we consider maintenance-free. We've put them inside the, the basement in a carpeted panel. Um, those are literally no maintenance. They're, we don't need to get in and clean those. Um, it's just the benefits of technology and how we've progressed throughout the years. Um, one thing we do have to mention too is your chassis batteries. Those are still the same. Those are exposed all the time. So we do want to make sure that we're cleaning those off. Probably monthly is probably best maintenance on those batteries. Awesome. Can you explain the different types of charge rates we use for our house batteries? So charging actually comes through our inverters. There are different charge rates. Um, you know, we go into a lot of good stuff and, and talk about how those work. Simple terms is it's, it's going to be a bulk absorb and a float charge. Um, occasionally you'll see the full charge and things that show up. And so that's either going to be on your Magnum controller or on your Vega touch screen in the hallway there. Those are going to tell you what state that charger is in. Simple terms, bulk charging is really as, as fast and as hard as we can charge the batteries. Absorb charging is maintaining that charge, maybe not pushing it as much, but it's still the same voltage that we're putting in. We get into a, a float charge. It's kind of more like of a, we're just supplementing what we've used. So it's going to use a little voltage, then it's going to recharge. It's going to use a little bit. It goes into a full charge. That's actually going to rest and allow those batteries to rest and actually come back down to their normal state. So we have an internal surge guard to protect our electrical systems and components. Is it necessary to have that external surge protector as well? It is in your best interest to have that external surge guard. Um, it's recommendation in all of our manuals, our owner's manuals, our user guides that we've created. All of those things are recommended. And, and yes, we do build a surge guard. It's great that we bring that up. A lot of customers ask it. We do have that inter internal surge guard. However, that internal surge guard is a one-time use. Getting that external is just added security. Mm -hmm. Again, turning off that post breaker before we plug in, that's another added security benefit. So we do highly recommend that surge guard because it's just added protection. I mean, if you want to look at cost, you're looking at somewhere roughly $350 for a surge guard. Um, if you don't use a surge guard and you have an issue with your transfer switch, you're looking between five to $700 to change that transfer switch. So again, it's a benefit to you as a customer it's worth the investment. So the auto generator start is a great feature to our coaches. What do the customers need to know about the auto generator settings and how it benefits them? So the auto generator start is actually a pretty neat little feature for us. Um, it's basically there to start the generator in an event you walk away from the coach or dry camping, or we do have it set up now that if you would lose power plugged into a, a campground somewhere, and let's just say they lose power. Um, and you, you know, you've got your, prized possession little poodle in the coach and you don't want him to be in any trouble or get too warm or anything so that auto gen star is actually set up that it runs off the air conditioners and off a of low voltage so in the event that you have too much heat in the coach or you know in the winter time it gets too cold it'll do either one it'll turn the air conditioners or the heat pumps as well as monitor the voltage 
So what that's looking at is we've set a parameter there. We actually have our set to 11.8. Anytime your house batteries would reach 11.8, it would trigger that auto gen start to come on and automatically charge back up for you. Your comfort control for the, the air conditioners and heat pumps, that's all based on your thermostat. Whatever you set your temperature to, you should lose power. That generator is, is there to start automatically and bring that coach back up to temperature and then that generator would go off when it was done with that cycle. Awesome. Well, that is it for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in to our segment on power management for Integra Coaching. See you guys soon.